not all of us as lucky as all of us, but like those people are lucky, right? So you got like what, New Mexico and Arizona and Nevada and South California. Those people get a lot of solar. And we will see how we can calculate those, those uh, what is the unit? Kilowatt hour per meter square per day, okay? So that's how much joules are arriving or how much kilowatt hour, that's energy, right? By the way, how many joules per kilowatt hour? Does anyone know? How, how, how can I calculate this? The joules per kilowatt hour, how do I do it? If I wanna turn kilowatt hour to joule. Help. Anyone? Can someone help, please? How can I turn kilowatt hour into joule? What is a watt hour? That's 3,600 watt second. And what is a watt second? That is joule. So watt second is joule because watt is joule per second. So, so yeah, so kilowatt hour first, I multiply by a thousand. Now it's watt hour. And then to turn into watt second, which is joule, I multiply by three, six, zero, zero. So this is how many joules in every kilowatt hour, okay? And, and kilowatt hour is like 10 cents. If you can convert that kilowatt hour to electricity at 100% efficiency, which is a big F, no, it does not work like that. But if you work at 100% efficiency, that basically say that every meter square in, in this place, we will get uh, uh, eight kilowatt hour. So that's 0.8 cent per meter square per day. Uh, so every meter square, meter by meter per day, they get 0.8 cent. Okay, so that immediately tell you that, wow, then I need really a lot of meters square. Yes, and so that's why the, the panels on top of the roof become really like take the whole roof. And that's why the solar cellular power plant that is drawn on our, the cover of our textbook, you see so many mirrors because they need to harvest a lot of kilowatt hour, right? So now I was saying that we will see the equation that will allow us to calculate this. One, one of my graduate students, he was actually working on a solar uh, heater. It's not solar heater, solar boiler. You, you wanna make the water boil using solar energy. And so he was using, we, he was using the equation to calculate the, the power that's available to us in the, from the sky. And so that equation that we will see has the latitude and it, can, it use the day and the time. So latitude, day and time, but it does not say whether you are here or here or here. And I would like to make the point right now in your head that those equations are just the ideal equation that basically say anyone living at 36 latitude need to be able to generate this much. But you look to this map and you look to those people here and to us in Tulsa, and we are at same latitude, but we don't have the same solar energy per year. Why? The equations say we should, but we, we don't get the same energy like they get. Why do they get more solar energy in Arizona and New Mexico compared to us? Is it cloud coverage or? Exactly. The cloud coverage, how much rain you have, how much humidity you have, right? So those are not in the equations, right? Those would be measurements on site specific, okay? So it's not just like anyone on top will, will basically don't get any solar. It, it depends on the cloud cover, that is correct, okay? Very good. So. But still, we are we are lucky as a country, right? Because and and we have here, I think, or here, we have the largest solar thermal power plant in the world. 
okay, that take the solar energy and generate electricity out of that. So now this, this map is, or this graph is just trying to tell you that, well, the sun has a spectrum, the light has a spectrum. This is the radiation we are getting from the sun. Okay, the black line, the, the, the dashed line is the ideal gray body at 5,800 Kelvin. So if the sun was a black body, we, we should get this. And you see, it's almost like the sun, but there is a little bit void because of the, the absorption that happened in the atmosphere of the sun. But then this is what the sun sent, but down on the ground, this is what we get. And so someone on the International Space Station will get this much radiation, huh? that black curve that they will get in the International Space Station. But you go under the Earth's atmosphere and you get a little bit lower. Why? Because the ozone, when, and we are grateful that the ozone is killing all the ultraviolet, otherwise we will get cancer in our skin, right? But you can also see like how the H2O and the CO2, like there's a bunch of absorption Heaven because of the water vapor that we have in our atmosphere. End of the day, the sun has a spectrum, okay? And this, this is my impression of our eye. This is what we see. The rest we don't see, okay? The rest is infrared and it's a long tail. And unfortunately, unfortunately, the, uh, the photovoltaic panel that you put in your house Will, will feed on this. They will turn this into electricity, but that long tail doesn't work for them. It actually goes through. So they will tell you that if you have like a silicon, which most, most of those photovoltaic are made of silicon. If you have a silicon piece like this in front of your eye and you have an infrared Googles, you will be able to see through it. Meaning the infrared radiation goes through silicon, does not get absorbed, just goes through. So that one of the reasons why you shouldn't be surprised to learn that the photovoltaic panels have theoretical efficiency of like 50% and the rest just go through. I mean, theoretically speaking, there, there is a maximum theoretical efficiency, right? But even the best one that we have in the lab, you will see that the efficiency is like 40 something. And the one that you buy from Lowe's or Home Depot, this probably have an efficiency of like 25% or something. So out of the, the kilowatt hour that's falling on it, only 20% or 25% will go into electricity on the other side, which means that you need even bigger area so that when you cut with a efficiency 25%, you will get a decent number, okay? So now the, in order to be able to figure out how much is falling on our solar collector or solar heater, we need to know exactly where is the sun every hour of the day. So a lot of the problem would be calculate how much radiation is falling in the photovoltaic panel and then how much electricity I'm gonna get this time. Well, then you need to know exactly where is the sun. So you are here, this is north, this is south, east, west. You are facing south. Then the, you will notice that the sun will come from the east, somewhere near the east, not exactly the east. It come only from the east on 21st of September and 21st of March. The rest of the winter, the sun come from here. The rest of the summer, the sun come from here. Okay, and we will be able to calculate exactly where the sun come from. Okay, but the sun rise, go up and in the middle of the day, it will reach the maximum highest point in the sky. That point, the angle that the, the sun make at the highest point is not necessarily 90, okay? As a matter of fact, anyone that is north of 23 will never get 90 degree sun. And the sun will never be on top of your head. It will be a little bit lower. And the farther north you go, the lower the sun will go up to, okay? So we, we need to be able to predict that or calculate this angle. This alpha is the, what? Is the angle between the sun the, or the line connecting you to the sun and the ground, the projection on the ground, that's alpha, okay? This is called solar altitude angle, alpha, okay? Now, the 
where is the sun? Is it coming from south or is it coming from the E? Like that journey, uh, the east to the west is characterized by that angle. What is this angle? This is the projection of the line connecting you to the sun and the south. Okay. And that's called the solar azimuth angle. So basically imagine yourself on the second world war and you were like, you, you are a gunner on a boat and you are trying to shoot an airplane, right? Like a Japanese airplane is coming to you. you all you need to find out is just two angle to, to shoot that airplane. You need to know which way should I move from the X of the, of the boat, of the ship and how high should I go? That's exactly how to locate the sun. The azimuth angle, like from the X, but northern than the boat, it's the X of the north-south. So how far I am from the south and how high should I go? Those two angles is enough. So solar altitude angle and solar azimuth angle. Obviously the solar altitude angle can go from zero to 90 max, but the solar azimuth angle can go from minus 180 to zero to plus 180. So zero is when you are facing south. When the sun is coming from south, when it's with the X, that azimuth angle AS is, is zero, okay? You go here, that's 90. You go here, that's minus 90. Make sense? Very good. So the, the equation, so here again, I'm trying to, to repeat that the azimuth angle is plus this way and negative this way. So the sun coming exactly from the east, the azimuth angle would be how much? It'd be negative 90. Excellent. And west, it would be exactly 90. Very good. So the two equations that calculate AS and alpha are here. Sine alpha and sine s. You calculate the sine from this equation and then you do sine minus one, you get the as. Same thing for alpha. You use this equation, you will be able to calculate sine alpha and in the calculator you do sine minus one, you calculate the alpha. And when we use the calculator, we need to make sure is it in degree or radian, okay? So that when you build a number, you are pulling it right. So, that equation has what in it? It has the latitude. That's the easiest thing. Latitude is the latitude of your city. Are you in Tulsa, Oklahoma? Then your latitude is 36 point something, right? Are you in Florida, Tampa, Florida? Are you in Washington, DC? You can you get the latitude. Is that how satellites use GPS to triangulate positions? Is that, that kind of the same thing? Well, it's, it's not exactly the same thing because this one, we only need to angle to find in the dome, right? Like we are looking to the sun as projection on the dome in front of us. But the other one, you need basically coordinates on, on, the, on the map, like X, Y. So I, I'm not sure, I'm not sure how does the satellite exactly find your location on the, on a, on the sphere. But I, I think I, I need to check that. I'm not really not sure, 100%. So the latitude, we just look at the map. There are two other angles that we need to worry about, delta S and HS. Delta S is actually the day will be transferred into an angle in a weird way that you will see next. And HS is the time of the day translated into an angle and we'll see how. So then this equation has the location, has the day and the hour. So 11 a.m. October 1st, Tulsa, Oklahoma. You can, using those two equations, you can find exactly where the sun is. Okay, so those two equations are amazing. All right, so now let's figure out how we can calculate HS and Delta S. How is the hour? The time like nine o'clock in the morning. How was the H, what is the HS then? And October 1st or November 2nd, what is Delta S for that day? First, the, the, the day, Delta S. So Delta S actually 
is going to be the day and and from 0 to 365 that's the days of the year okay so january 30 that would be 30 this is called julian date what's the julian date it's the number of the days in the year so for example if i want october 1st what's the julian date for october 1st Okay, let me add 31st for January plus 28 for February. We don't have 29 in this course. This course only have 28 February. 31 in March, 30 in April. And, and you add all the thing and then you figure out what is October 1st or November 2nd or December 31st would be 366, 365. So you can come up to this map and, and put the date and, and just figure the delta or you can put it in this equation, okay? So N is the Julian day. January 1, Julian day is one. December 31st, Julian day is 365. So what does this equation say? 23.45 multiplied by sine 360 multiplied by 284 plus N divided by 365. And when you do this, this sign need to be in degree. Like this is an angle in degree. So you can see what he's doing, huh? What is he doing? He's turning the year into an angle between, between one and 360. That's what this conversion is doing. 284 plus the N over 365, that ratio will tell you how far you are in that 360 degree cycle, okay? And where this is coming from, what is that delta exactly? That is delta, look at that sketch. So this is the sun. Actually, I should put you over here, but this is the sun and this is the earth. And this is the equatorial plane, the equator and the equatorial plane is the plane where the equator is sitting. And the sun, the earth is rotating around itself. Okay, and but the X is tilted. The X is tilted. And as a result, this would be, we are living here. We are living in the North, right? North America. So this would be our summer where we are facing the sun like this. In the winter, we would go to the other side. So in the, in the winter, the South Australia would be the one facing the sun and we will be a little bit far away. We'll be tilted a little bit far away. But now I would like you to imagine someone sitting on the sun, looking at the earth while it's rotating from summer to fall to winter to spring to summer again. Someone sitting at the sun, looking at the earth and looking at the line connecting the two of them. And the angle this line is making with the equatorial plane, that angle delta, it will feel as if it's doing this. Okay, that, that require in order to get this right, you need to go after we finish today, get an orange, but stick a, a, a knife in it or a pencil or something and put your hand in the middle as the sun and keep moving that orange around your hand, okay? And don't let anyone see you so that they wouldn't think you are crazy. But this, when you do this, you will realize that, wow, the equatorial plane in the summer was tilted 23, but then here, it's actually the same. That delta is zero. Someone sitting at sun will see the angle is zero. And then coming here, it will be minus. That's what this graph is tracking. Okay, forget about this. I just wanted to, you to know what is delta. But at the end of the day, we need delta in the equation for the sun angles. And the delta come from this equation, end of the story. What's in the Julian day? How do I calculate that? There are web pages on the website that you can tell them what's the Julian day for February 1st. They will tell you immediately. Or you can just count in your hand or your calculator or whatever and you figure out what's the Julian day. Put it in, get the delta. Questions? Very good, excellent. So now the, the hour, we said three, three angle. Latitude, we get it from the map. Delta, we'll get it from the date, what day it is. The third one is the hour angle. 9 a.m. What is the HS? What's the hour angle? So let's call the solar hour angle. Okay. So the sun 
ha? come in the east in the morning, rise up. This is alpha against AS, by the way. Rise, rise, rise. You can see how alpha is getting bigger and bigger and bigger until, say, at that place, this place is Mississippi State University. They hit 80 degree at solar noon. And then it will drop again, okay? So the, the point where the, the, the sun reached the maximum, huh? maximum height, that's called the solar noon. And the day is actually symmetric around that time. That solar noon, again, is the reference for the hour. So that solar noon was the reference for the azimuth angle AS, we said when, when the sun is facing south, that's the solar noon, and that will be AS equals zero. And in the west, it will be plus, in the east, it will be negative. Well, the same thing for the time. So when you hit noon, the hour angle is zero. You are noon. At one o'clock in the evening, that is, the hour angle for this is 15 degrees. At two o'clock, it's 30 degrees. Three o'clock, 45 degrees. What I'm doing? I'm adding 15 degrees every hour. And over here, 11 a.m., that's minus 15. 10 a.m., minus 30. 9 a.m., minus 45. Why, why 50 degree, uh, 15 degree every hour? Why is that? It's because the Earth make one round in one day. One day is 24 hour. One round is 360. You divide 360 over 24, you get 15 degree. So 15 degree, the sun, not the sun, the Earth rotate one hour, like every one hour, the Earth rotate 15 degree, 15 degree, 15 degree. So we measure our position, the, the, the orange in front of the sun change 15 degree every one hour, right? So if you are not really in front of the sun yet, you will come in front of the sun in 15 degree. And then 15 degree will be a little bit off, right? So, So we turn the, the time into hour by measuring how far we are from solar noon. 11 a.m., that is minus 15 degree. 1 p.m., that's plus 15 degree, okay? So now, right now, let me tell you that a lot of students confuse the hour angle with the solar azimuth angle, meaning they think that if it's one o'clock, 1 p.m., the hour angle is plus 15, and as Miss Angle is, what do you think they think wrongly? At 1 p.m., where do you think they think AS is the solar as Angle? They think it's all 15 degree. They think at 1 p.m. the sun has to make uh, 15 degree on the ground. That, that means that they think that the, at 6 p.m., the sun always have to be in the west. No. The hour angle and the azimuth angle are two different things. And how quickly does the sun go to the west, uh, depending on how long the day is. Right? And there is equation to calculate the hour angle. Sorry, the azimuth angle. So the azimuth angle gets calculated from this. The azimuth angle get calculated from this equation. But the hour angle, we just look at the time and tell ourselves how far are we from the noon. There is no equation for it. Okay, just like how far you are from the solar noon time-wise. And you turn the time into 15 degree. Okay, so does Something in what I said does not make sense. And it has to do with this map. What do you see in this map? What in this map that make what I said about the hour angle does not make sense? I mean, let's open over here. All those people have the same time on their clock. So when, when this guy has 11 a.m., this guy also has 11 a.m. So, I mean, this guy could have the sun in front of him right now and it's facing south because he's sitting over there 
But this guy, the sun was there 15 minutes ago. It already went to the west, right? Because as, as that orange rotate around itself, right? Different, we call those meridians, right? Different meridian will come and have their time in front of the sun. That's their solar noon. As everyone rotate and come exactly in front of the sun, that's your solar noon. So Tulsa have solar noon right now. Still water, you have to wait a little bit. And then still water come and have the solar noon. And just few minutes later, Oklahoma City will get their solar noon. But Oklahoma City, still water and Tulsa, all of them have exactly the same clock. It's every one of them just read, ah, oh, it's like 12.05 in Tulsa and uh, 11, no, everyone's 12.05. And still they have different solar noon. So how is that possible? Okay, and, and especially like in a country like China, look at that. I mean, this guy, this guy have his solar noon right now. This guy is still waking up. Huh? It's like 12 o'clock over here. And this guy is probably, it's like seven o'clock in the morning. But imagine when those people have to walk at seven o'clock because, because it's like Peking and they have to walk up at seven. Those have to woke up at six o'clock in the at night and like, man, I need to sleep. Like, no, everyone woke up. It's seven o'clock in China right now. We go to work. So when the country is all under one time zone, huh? They just basically have one clock. And sometimes this time zone doesn't do with the sun. It has to do with the, uh, just like the politics and like what country you wanna sink to. Like, look at this. Chile, I guess, right, is like stuck with uh, with uh, with those people, right? I mean, it should stick with this people, not those people, right? Or Argentine, do you just want to have the same time like Brazil? Do you just want to wake up with them? Even if it means like waking up one hour early, they don't care. They just want to be with them. Okay, so what, what am I saying? I'm saying that, that your clock is not the real time. It's not the solar time. There is something called the solar time and there's something called the standard time. And the standard time is political. Huh? It's like how the country divides itself into time zones. But the equation that we're gonna use, huh? the equation that we're gonna use require HS that is based on the solar time, not what your clock is telling you. So unfortunately we have to do that conversion. So the problem would come and say at three o'clock standard time, where is the sun? Okay, where is the sun? I need to use those two equations. But I need to figure out what is actually the time, not three o'clock standard time. So we need to convert from standard time to solar time. Make sense? We need to convert from the standard time to the solar time or what I would love to call the real time. Uh, the time in the... When we lived in caves, we only had the solar time, you know, like people would say, okay, I'll meet you when the, the stick doesn't have a shadow. That's when we will meet. That's how we know, right? So how do we do this conversion? You need to know, first of all, your local longitude. So Tulsa, Oklahoma has 36 latitude, 95 longitude. We live on 95, okay? But everyone in that region, central time zone, have their clock adjusted for those lucky guys in Arkansas that they are sitting on 90. Only those guys will have the sun exactly at 12 o'clock in their clock. Everyone else will have their time. Those people will have their solar noon at like 12.20 or something. And those people will have their solar noon when it's like still 11.40. But only those people here will have their solar time exactly at solar noon. Why? Because their clock match their solar time. Okay. I'm going to, in a in, in few slides, I'm going to back up from this until you know there's still a little bit of an error. We will fix that later on. But for now, just humor me and think, yes, those people are lucky. They have exactly the sun at 12 o'clock in the noon. Okay, so how do I do the correction then between 
standard time that I'm just following Arkansas and my solar time in Tulsa, Oklahoma. So I can use the equation. There is, by the way, there is also another thing that happened in the summer, the day saving time in the summer. So in the day saving time, we not just, so not only we are screwing ourselves by following our cancel, right? And it's, there is a reason why, because like we all want to watch the TV at the same time, you know, when, when the, sh the game start and they say six o'clock, we really want to look at our clock and see six o'clock and open the game. If we're going to, everyone who's follow his time, you know, this would be like six o'clock here. The game is starting 6.13 here. The Oklahoma City will start the game at 6.17. It's going to be a mess, right? And imagine if we have a war and all the airplanes are trying to, to fly. And like, okay, space, the <laughs> Edward Air Force Base, you fly at 11.44. The <laughs> right? Right, bet you guys are gonna fly at 467. It would be like horrible. So there is a reason why we follow one clock. But on, on top of that standard time and local time, there's also day saving time, which add one hour to us in the summer, right? So that we woke up early. It will be six o'clock in the morning and you're in bed, but they tell you no, it's actually seven now. Why we just made the clock seven. We added one hour so that you can leave the bed at six o'clock. Why? Why? Well, the sun is out. Why you are staying home at six? Just leave. And and when you leave early, you can come back from work early rather than finishing at five. You will actually finish at four because your clock would say five, but it's really four. And so you will have from four until a lot of time in the evening, you can go to the park and you can go to the movies and you can go shopping and there'll be a lot of time for you at the end of the day because one, you left work early, one hour, two, the sun actually is not gonna set until nine o'clock in the evening. So you're gonna have a lot of time at the end of the day because we, we made you go early and you're gonna get more sun in the evening too because that's what happened in the summer, right? And it get more and more as people go up north. So in, in Michigan, you know, it will be better than Mexico, right? And in, in Canada, it will be even better. You get more and more span, okay? But as far as we're concerned, we have to fix this in the equation. So when, when he says 3 p.m. in July 21st, where is the sun? You tell yourself, oh, July, that's day saving time. So to start with, the standard time shouldn't be three, it should have been two. And then now let me fix the standard time to the solar time. So fix for the day saving time. Second, we will fix for the, let, let me go here first. Second, so you first you have to put the standard time and the standard time and the day saving time, they have one hour difference between them. 3 p.m. day saving time is 2 p.m. standard time. The, the difference between the standard longitude and the local, the fact that you are living at 95, but you are adjusted to 90, that means four degree, four minute for every degree difference. Four minute for every degree difference. Why? Because the sun, or sorry, the earth, make 15 degree in one hour, 15 degree in 60 minutes. So 60 minutes, 15 degree, that basically means every degree is one is four minutes, right? So when, when you are at 90, living at 95 and you are adjusting your clock at standard longitude, SL stands for standard longitude. You're adjusting your watch on 90, this is five degree time four, there's 20 minutes. So we in Tulsa, Oklahoma have been screwed by 20 minutes all our life. So on, on, on New Year, when you kiss your significant other and said, congratulations, it's midnight, it was wrong. It was actually 20 minutes wrong, right? Because the, the actual year didn't start that time. It's, it started a little bit, uh, it's gonna start 20 minutes later, right? It's only 20, it's, it's only midnight at our cancer. But in Tulsa, we need to celebrate New Year at 1220 not 12, 
because this we will get in the right position the star and all the magic will happen exactly at you know four time standard longitude minus local longitude make sense so this is the first two collection two correction those make sense now the one that will be super weird for you is this so if you remember there's something called kibler laws you probably have heard about them in physics in high school or something kibler laws say that when a planet run around a star the star usually will sit in one of the two focal point and the, the planet have to have same area in the same time so like he will cover that area in the same time that will cover that area so when we get closer to the sun and we do in our winter in the north winter we are actually closer than the sun okay so i guess that means that the summer of the south is probably more brutal okay that our summer but it's not a big deal because the whole thing is like three percent or something but still what does that do is that we are closer and so when we get closer we have to move faster. So when the Earth move faster around the sun, here's a surprise of your life. We rotate fast around our orbit. So the day that we have always been telling you that it's 24 hour per year, it's not. The day gets shorter and longer depending on are we far away or close to the sun. Okay, so that is a shock. It was a shock when I first heard about this when I was a student. But the good news is you don't need to panic. At the end of the year, what is the average hour per day? 24.00000. So we, we get even at the end. But as a result, you get screwed up this much minutes during the year. The difference could be up to 16 minutes. You think you woke up at seven, but the real time huh, should have been, you know, 7.15. All right. Get as low as minus 14 and it get as low as uh, seven, as 15, 16 over here. And this is function of what? Julian day. So this is like October, November, December thing, right? And, and this is like uh, January, February. So 30, that's January 31st, right? So this is like February. So we could be off by 14 degree right now in February 17. So I should finish the lecture now because like we are 15 minutes off, right? So, so how this, this curve, you can read from this curve and get that correction. Or to be accurate, you should use this equation, okay? This equation has a problem with it. People screw up the degree and the radio because this equation say, let's read it. 9.87 sine 2bn minus seven cosine bn minus 1.5 sine bn. This will give you minutes. This equation will tell you exactly what this graph is telling you. will tell you if you are like 300, it should be 16 minutes, for example, okay? So this will give you a minute if you plug in BN in degree or radian, look at this and tell me. BN should be in? Degree. Radian, radian, because he is multiplying by Y over 180, he's converting it into radian, okay? So, so what I say is that cancel the by and now 180 and, and make it in degree. And that every year make a mess. The students get confused by this. So this, you keep it as it is and it is in radian. Okay, you plug it here in radian, you will get the in minute. And, and actually you have a really good check. The graph is a check. I mean, it's not that great to read from, but it's very, it's excellent graph to check. Right? I mean, you, you put 240, and if this number come anything that's not minus three, minus two, you know that you screwed up. 
Make sense? So those three correction, the E, uh, the difference between standard longitude and local longitude and the day saving time eventually will tell you 3 BM is actually 214. Okay, so the solar time is 214 BM. What is our angle? Two, two BM, two BM that mean immediately what? Plus 30, right? Because every hour is 15. So two BM, that's plus 30. How about two, he said 214 PM. How do I do the 14? Every minute is how much? Every four minute is one degree, right? Every four minutes is one degree because the whole hour is 15 degree. So you turn the minute divided by 60 that become hour multiplied by 15. Or tell yourself, Every, every four minutes is one degree. So I divide over four, I get, I get the degree. Does this make sense? One hour is 15 degree. Therefore, four minutes is one degree. Do the conversion. All right, so here's an example. Huh? If not, not yet, but if an hour, it's 15 degrees, 11 a.m. minus 15 degrees, 10 a.m. minus 30 degrees, 3 p.m. 4 degrees. And those are all solar time. We do the equation to get the solar time to work for us. Okay. So calculate the solar latitude altitude at, at solar noon. So that's basically alpha max. Alpha will never be more than what it is at solar noon. So this example, unfortunately, does not make you fix the time because he told you already solar noon. So you know it's solar time, right? He didn't say at 11 a.m. or 1.15 p.m. He said at solar noon, not, not standard time noon, it's solar noon. So it's exactly HS is zero. Solar noon, HS is zero. And he said the day delta is 23. He didn't even allow me to use uh, the equation for the delta. As he said, July, so this is actually delta 23.45. That would be what? That would be June 23, right? June, sorry, June 31st. So so you, you do the delta, you will get the, you do the, the, the equation for delta, you will get the delta. But he gave us exactly the three angle. HS is zero. Delta is given and the latitude L is 40 plus 40. So all I have to do is just come to the equation and substitute L and Delta and HS. When HS is zero, this guy go cosine zero is one, right? So you just get, get sine L sine Delta plus cosine L cosine Delta. And you substitute in this and you get the number. Okay, so now this is not that important, but it's actually very, uh, very exciting to, to figure this out. It will literally tell you a lot about the sun orientation on different latitudes. So what he's saying is that this equation at solar noon, when we are trying to calculate the max alpha, HS is zero. So this cosine will always go to one. And that equation becomes sine sine plus cosine cosine. If you remember your trig, trig relation, sine sine plus cosine cosine is cosine this minus this, cosine L minus delta. And when sine alpha become cosine another angle, they are part of a triangle. When the sine of this equal cosine of this, they are sharing a 90 degree triangle. That's why the sine of this guy is the cosine of this guy, which means then that those two angle, huh? if you add those two angles together, you get 90. So alpha plus this is 90, or basically alpha max is 90 minus L plus delta. How is that useful? That tell you why, why in Oklahoma, in Tulsa, Oklahoma, we will never get alpha equal 90 because our L is, 36 
And the maximum delta S that we can get in the middle of the summer is 23. So minus 30 S plus 23, that will tell you we have a deficit from 90 by this much. And it also make you realize that the only people that can get 90 are the one that has L smaller than 23. So only the people living between minus 23.45 and plus 23.45 will get alpha equal 90. But anyone else north of 23.45 will get alpha max less than 90. It will be lower. And the higher you go, your alpha max will become lower and lower and lower. Okay, so the tilt of the solar collector on top of your roof will get more and more as you travel north. So people up north, they will have to tell their solar collector a little bit higher, more. Why? Because the sun never come on top of them. The sun is always tilted, right? But we go to Tulsa and then we rest our collector a little bit lower. And if we live even north, or sorry, south of 23, we can actually make it like completely flat because the sun will come on, on directly on top of us. All right? So that's what I'll try to explain over here. That this angle, huh, that, that this is alpha max and that is, so this is you, this is you living on 20, what, 40 degree north or 36 degree north. And the stopping barrier to like this, this is the sun and this is your alpha max. And this is what is preventing you from getting the sun directly on top of your head, L minus delta. Your latitude minus your delta. And yes, delta change during the, uh, the year, but it will never get more than 23. So if you have L bigger than 23, you will never close this to zero. Okay? Questions? All right, so, so I want today just to be able to make you calculate sine alpha and sine AS. How do you calculate those from those two equations? What do you need to calculate them? Those three angles, latitude, delta, and the hour angle. And you get the hour angle from the solar time. And if solar time was not given, we need to calculate the solar time by those three corrections that we explained. All right, so practice on those, try to come up with those number yourself, okay? So I'm not gonna give you homework this week because you have to prepare for the exam, but those, those calculations take time. And when it come in the second midterm, when the solar show up in the second midterm, my experience is that the students take forever to calculate those if they don't practice themselves. So please try to practice calculating them. Questions? Right. The first five, 10 minutes of the lecture. So the exam will cover before this one. So the the exam will cover the, the third machines and the wind. The wind, I'm not gonna, the thing that we explained today about the, how we can couple the, the curve of the, of the wind side. Where's the curve of the turbine? We'll leave this maybe for the final, but what I need from you is to understand the capacity factor, because I may want to use it in a problem. What is the capacity factor? How much of the 8,760 hour per year does the wind turbine run at full load? So this, this number is very important to turn power into energy so that you wouldn't think I got my one megawatt turbine. I'm gonna get one megawatt time 8,760 hour. And that's how much joule I'm gonna get at the end of the year. So I need you to realize that no, you don't get the whole year. You get the capacity factor of that year. Okay. okay. Does this make sense? Yep. Very good. Thank you so much. And good luck in next week and stay safe and make sure you are, uh, you and your car are healthy. Okay. Bye for now.